statements of the universe. It tells us that God is not the universe itself, nor is God contained within the universe. Now, Stephen Hawking's book, uh, A Brief History of Time, I teach a class on this book every, every fall, and uh, it's uh, always well attended. Uh, his book has sold 20 million copies. That, uh, that's never happened before for any book about science. In fact, I think it's true that there's no book about science that's ever sold more than one million copies. So the publication of A Brief History of Time is truly a landmark in, uh, in, in the history of, of, of literature. Well, not too surprisingly, other great physicists have decided that uh, they would like to uh, become as rich as Stephen Hawking. And uh, a number of them have written uh, quite interesting books. Uh, one of them, uh, a book by Leon Letterman, Accelerator, Particle Phys uh, Nobel Prize Physicist. And his book has the best title. It's called uh, The God Particle. Let me read you the first paragraph, because I think it's good. Uh, Letterman says, in the very beginning there was a void, a curious form of vacuum, a nothingness containing no space, no time, no matter, no light, no sound. Yet the laws of nature were in place, and this curious vacuum held potential. The story logically begins at the beginning, uh, but this story is about the universe, and unfortunately there is no data from the very beginning. None, zero. We don't know anything about the universe until it reaches the mature age of a billionth of a trillionth of a second. That is some very short time after the creation of the Big Bang. When you read or hear anything about the birth of the universe, someone is making it up. We are in the realm of philosophy. Only God knows what happened at the very beginning. Stephen Hawking has said much the same. In his book, A Brief History of Time, the actual scope of creation lies outside, excuse me, the actual point of creation lies outside the scope of the presently known laws of physics. And Alan Guth, his uh, North American counterpart, uh, said much the same, the instant of creation remains unexplained. Now, I, I may have a picture of Hawking there on the next slide. Let's take a look. No, I don't. This is, a, this, is a, this is an artist's depiction of the Big Bang. And uh, some may like this, and, and some may not. Uh, this, uh, this was uh, proposed by Alan Booth, though. I will say that. And down here is... Uh, down here is... It's on the bottom. Yes. <laughs> down at the bottom is, uh, is, is what's supposed to represent the tiny universal speck. Now, actually, this, this tiny speck is, uh, is, is incredibly many, 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 many orders of magnitude smaller than this. In fact, some have argued maybe it occupies no volume at all. And, and 10 to the minus uh, 35 seconds, we have inflation ending. A second layer, atomic nuclear form, chemistry becomes possible. Half a million years universal. And here we are, 13.7 billion years later, the universe keeps, uh, keeps expanding. Keeps expanding. Now, um, we uh, must say something about Stephen Hawking's research. Uh, Hawking has made an amazing reputation, a well-deserved reputation, by investigating in great detail one particular set of problems, the singularities and horizons around black holes and at the beginning of time. And let me give you a definition, possibly a future dictionary definition, of a black hole as a massive system so centrally condensed that its force of gravity prevents everything within it, including light, from escaping. A few years back, I asked my 11-year-old son, Caleb, what he thought about this definition of a black hole. He took a look at it, and actually he looked at it longer than I thought he would. And he said, Dad, it's pretty good, but uh, it's certainly not complete. And I said, well, what's incomplete about my definition of black hole? He said, well, Dad, you said nothing at all about how scary black holes are. <laughs> and I said, son, why do you think black holes are scary? He said, Dad, it's on the Saturday morning cartoons every week. <laughs> and uh, the, the truth of the matter is that Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose are largely to blame for this because they just can't resist uh, talking in great detail about what happens when a human being falls into a black hole. And as you 
might ex expect the, the results are not very good. Uh, but realistically, there are no black holes in the neighborhood. Uh, you wouldn't want to be in the neighborhood, either in Mumbai or any place else in India or the rest of the, the planet. So, uh, yeah, so black holes are scary. Maybe. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, night, the, the work that done by Stephen Hawking between 1968 and 1970 remains his most famous. This is his PhD thesis research. So those of you who are PhD students do good work. You might be remembered for it 50 years later. Uh, this work was done with Roger Penrose and, uh, and George Ellis, two other remarkable scientists. We'll say more about. Uh, they demonstrated that every solution to the equations of general relativity guarantees the existence of a singular boundary for space and time in the past. This result is now known as the singularity uh, theorem. It's, it's as good as we have for a mathematical rationalization of the Big Bang. Of course, Hawking went on to do independent research in 1974, quantum evaporation of black holes, exploding black holes, Hawking radiation, and, uh, and so on. And maybe the next one I have a picture of Stephen Hawking. What do you think? Testament. 